Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, today I'll be presenting our work OmniSearch Search, the multitask, multi-entity embeddings for Pinterest search. I'd like to start with a spec. I'd like to start with a special shout out to all my co-authors and other colleagues who have contributed to this work. To give a brief background, uh, Pinterest is a platform to find inspiration and to tools to realize that in one's life. Um, users visit Pinterest for a diverse range of motivations. It could be as simple as deciding what to have for lunch or as significant as organizing their wedding. As such, search is a crucial discovery surface on Pinterest where users find inspiration. Catering to over 6 billion searches per month, our challenge is to unearth relevant content uh, from a billions of pens and products in order to co construct an inspiring feed. Uh, in order to enhance the search experience, uh, Pinterest search, as like any other modern search system, encompasses a diverse range of content. Uh, we have web pins consisting of image, description, and, and an optional link. We also have products which are like shoppable items, consist of multiple images, links, and product metadata. Uh, we also have uh, related queries in the feed to guide the user further in their inspiration journey. Um, just to give background how p users interact on the platform, um, so there are various actions that the users can take, the two important ones of which are long clicks and save. So user searches something on uh, feed, and when it finds an interesting feed, they can click on it uh, and go to the link associated with it and read more about it. Um, if they like it, they can also save it to one of their personal collections, which we refer to as the boards on Pinterest. Uh, as we know, uh, embeddings are useful uh, building blocks in any recommendation system. Uh, and to recap, uh, the goal of an embedding model is to map related pins and queries uh, to similar positions in an embedding space. Uh, for example, here, the embedding for the query cat should be close to the embedding for a pin of a cat. Uh, but much further for uh, unrelated query like nuclear submarine. Meanwhile, uh, for a related query like dog, the embedding should fall somewhere in between. Uh, this kind of semantic structure in the embedding space gives the embeddings great power for various downstream applications in the recommendation stack. Uh, but training separate two tower models of, uh, for each of this uh, content type and representation proves to be resource intensive and inefficient. And hence, uh, to address this issue, uh, we introduce OmniSearch Sage, which offers a unified query embedding model that jointly trains uh, embeddings for query query, query pin, and query product uh, retrieval, ranking, and classification. In addition, we also train the query embeddings to be compatible with the existing entity embeddings, which allows to, for very easy adoption in various downstream models. Um, so as we know, the main component of any embedding model is the data. We need these paired uh, pin and query data to learn the similarities and get this a semantic structure. And for this, we use one year of our query logs for both on-site and uh, off-site engagement and use that to train our model. And we have around uh, one uh, a billion scale size of the data set for this. Uh, one thing that we do here to lim uh, normalize the data is that, in general, for all search system, the distribution of queries follows kind of a zip's law, where some queries have a high volume, whereas there is a long tail of queries. And so to, to basically address the, this popularity issue of queries in the data set, we limit the number of rows per query to 50 or 200, depending on the engagement of for a particular content type. Um, coming to the architecture, uh, the query encoder in a model is based on the multilingual version of Distilbert. Uh, we take the output corresponding to the CLS token, project it to a 256 dimension vector, and normalize it for new unit norm. And empirically, we have found that fine-tuning all the layers of distilled works best for us, given the data scale we are operating at. Um, for the uh, pin and product mod, uh, encoders, we kind of use like a single unified encoder for both pins and products. And in cases where features are defined for one entity, but not the other, for example here, pin stage is defined for pins, and item stage is defined for items, we basically substitute them with zero, ensuring like a data, uh, consistent data input for our examples. As we can see here, uh, our entity encoder is multimodal, consuming both images and the associated text with pins and uh, products. 
Uh, for images, we use our in-house image embedding model and other existing entity embeddings as features in the encoder. Uh, for text features, we use a bag of words approach. A combination of unigram and bigram tokenizers are used to tokenize this text, which is then uh, embedded into a low dimension using a hash embedding bag. Uh, this kind of structure gives like a good trade-off between the representation power the model has and also the training batch size, because uh, for contrastive learning, we want to have as big as training batch size, so you have like good amount of in-batch negatives. And so scaling this to something like a transformer reduces that significantly without giving much benefit into the performance. Um, in addition to the title and description, which are like associated with the content of the pin, we also augment the text features using historical engagement and generative models. So as I mentioned earlier, on Pinterest, users explore and save their pins to their personal collections, which we call as boards. Um, each board carries an associated title, which kind of reflects the topic and the theme of the collection. And these board titles provide val valuable user-generated descriptors for the pins, and we then exploit this to like improve the understanding of the pins in our encoder. Uh, we also utilize the blip fun model to generate captions for our pin images, and this kind of help add more information about the pen, especially with cases where title and description are missing or of lower quality because all of these are like user generated and users are like saving it for different sites and others. And lastly, uh, when users interact with a specific pin or product for a certain query, it signifies that the pin is very relevant to that query and useful for different users. And also signifies how this entity is being perceived by the users. Hence, we use the top uh, engage queries for a pin to further expand our understanding of the pin or product. I'll discuss later of how each of these enrichments help improve the performance of the model. Uh, to train these encoders, we use the standard sample softmax loss with log Q correction. Uh, we also use random sampled uh, negatives in addition to the in-batch negatives to allow us to steer away from the engagement distribution of the corpus that is represented in the in-batch negatives. Uh, this diagram schematically de uh, depicts how the negatives are sampled for each row. Uh, one thing to note here is that the uh, same random negatives are used for all examples in the batch, increasing the data efficiency quite a lot. Uh, for offline evaluation, we use recall at 10, which measures if the positive entity from the positive pair is ranked in the top 10 of the corpus. Um, and since the metric is empirically found to be scaling like, linearly with corpus size, we use a corpus size of five or 10 million during offline evaluation. So this table shows the results when compared to a production baseline model. And it, as is evident, the unified model outperforms the baseline production models, which were like separate for different entities uh, and in all tasks and all entities. Um, we also show in the paper, I've not included it here, is that the unified model is either better or as good as the independently trained models uh, for each task and entity, which basically shows the power of the unification. Uh, in this table, we are trying to see how the impact of different text enrichments as I, I was discussing before. Um, as you can see, uh, adding more text features capturing different aspects of the pin improved the performance significantly. For example, the engagement-based features, which are like user annotations coming from both titles or the engaged queries, give a huge boost as they inform the content, as they inform like how the content is being perceived by the users, which can be very different from the description or the content of the pin, as you can see like from the boost of like 20% and 10%. Um, OmniSearch Sage has been deployed at Pinterest for over a year now and is an integral component of the search tag. It is used in query understanding and query intent models. It's used for embedding based retrieval. It is used in L1 and L2 scoring models and also the relevance models. Uh, the query embedding server there serves a QPS of more than 300K and is enabled by using like a month long cache and also an efficient C++, C++ implementations of like the serving system and also the board tokenizers, which kind of helps us a lot to, to get like very low latency, which is required in recommendation systems. Um, we measured the online performance uh, using search fulfillment rate, uh, which is basically the ratio of the search sessions that have at least one user engagement. And it, it historically, like even 0.5 improvement is considered significant for this metric. Um, over 10 plus launches, uh, OmniSearch has led to significant improvements over like 7% improvement in search fulfillment rate and over 8% improvement in the click-through rate for search ads. 
uh, it has also led to like significant improvement in relevance particularly for tail queries because tail queries are more specified and hence harder to capture using other non embedding based techniques uh, i guess yeah thanks for uh, listening and let me know if you have any questions we have open sourced our model code implementation and all fast tokenizers to so do check it out on github and feel free to reach out if you have any questions after the presentation as well uh, email address is here